I got another really good question. And uh, when you get questions like this, it shows that your listeners really study the Bible, really get into the Bible. The question is, if a child takes the mark of the beast in the tribulation, will he be automatically damned if a child takes it? You may disagree with this, but I believe the quick answer is no. Now let's look at it. In Revelation 14, 10, and 11, it says, The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment is sent it up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast in his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. I believe when it comes to taking the mark of, of the beast, a real conscious, conscious decision is being made. I believe the conscious decision being made has more to do with the damnation than the taking the mark of the beast itself. It is the people who make a conscious decision to worship the beast and receive the mark. For example, if someone just uh, puts you under some type of drug or something and, and put the mark in you, on you or in you, I don't believe that person would be damned. They didn't receive it. And for example, if someone hears the gospel of Jesus Christ and doesn't receive it today, then they're not saved. Uh, a person who is saved made a decision with what they would, would do with Jesus Christ in the gospel. Uh, the people in the book of Revelation during the tribulation make a decision with what they would do with the Antichrist and the mark. Just like you made a decision with what you're doing with Jesus Christ and the gospel. I believe the age of accountability also still comes into play in this future time period. Because today a young child or baby cannot make a decision to believe on Jesus Christ. They don't understand that they have sinned against God. This doesn't mean they are damned to hell forever if they, if they died before they could come to this understanding. For example... David's child died because of his sin with the Bathsheba. In 2 Samuel 12, 22 through 23, it says, And he said, While the child was yet alive, I fasted and wept. For I said, Who can tell whether God will be gracious to me that the child may live? But now he is dead. Wherefore should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. Notice that David said, I shall go to him talking about his his child this gives people hope who have a, a lost or young child who, who've lost a young child or a, a baby this gives them hope that they will see them again one day and we when we are with the lord you know if you've lost a child you have that hope that when you die you and you go to be with the lord that you're also going to be see your child again and I believe that these verses in 2 Samuel 12 prove a child who dies without knowledge that he sinned against God. That child goes to heaven. The next example isn't as clear, but I believe it is proof that children are safe. In Luke 18, 16, and 17, it says, But Jesus called them unto him and said, Suffer little children to come unto me and forbid them not. For of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. Jesus said the little children are in the kingdom of God. I believe a child is safe until he reaches that certain age and then he must be born again. And the age would be different with all people. Another example is the Apostle Paul. He says he was alive, but when the commandment came, he died. In Romans 7, 9 through 12, Paul said, For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived, and I died. And the commandment which was ordained to life I found to be unto death, for sin taking occasion by the commandment deceived me, and by it slew me. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy and just and good. So Paul was considered alive before he had the knowledge of the law. However, when he got knowledge that he had broken God's laws and sinned against him, he died, spiritually speaking. 
And this is why he needed to get born again. When he was uh, uh, just born and a young child, he was alive without the law. That commandment made sin seem exceeding sinful. It slew him, and then he died, and he needed to get born again. Paul was alive without the law once, and then the commandment came. He realized he had sinned against God. And like the, the psalmist said in Psalm 51, 3 through 4, For I acknowledge my transgression, and my sin is ever before me. Now listen to this. Against thee and thee only have I sinned. And done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. So he said, against thee, thee only, have I sinned. When you come to that place where you, you, you know you've sinned, and you know you've sinned against God, then it's time for you to be born again. You, you were alive without the law once. You didn't understand you had sinned against an almighty God. But when you get to the place... Where you're sinned against thee and thee only have I sinned. You know you've sinned against God. You need to be born again. And to worship the beast, receive his mark, and the number of his name, is just is simply breaking the commands of God. Think about it. When those people worship the beast and to receive his mark, they're just, they're just doing what God told them not to do back in Exodus 20. In Exodus 23 through 4, thou shalt have no other gods before me. If you worship the beast, that's exactly what you're doing. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is under the water in the water under the earth. And they're putting a mark on them, just like he told them not to put a mark on them. In Exodus 34, 14, it says, For thou shalt worship no other god. For the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. Taking the mark and worshiping the beast is breaking the same laws that God told you not to break in the Old Testament. And I don't believe a child would be held accountable for taking the mark. But if he's not reached the age of, of any understanding of these certain things, nor could they truly worship the beast. Even if they did, they don't have their sins imputed to them yet. It isn't that they are born sinless. Because we're all born sinners, according to Psalm 58, 3, it says the wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. The fact is that God is judge of all the earth, and he does right. All men are born sinners. They just don't have their sins imputed to them when they are a child, or even if they are born feeble-minded and they could live, they live uh, with a feeble mind their whole life. A man could be 50. And if he's just feeble-minded, doesn't have the knowledge of good and evil, then he's safe. God knows their heart and mind. He would be able to determine who should be held accountable and who shouldn't be held accountable. In Romans 5.13, or Romans 5, 13, it says, For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. The sin's not imputed to the people that don't even understand that they've sinned against an almighty God. Before Adam and Eve ate the fruit, they were in a state of innocence. However, after they ate off the tree of, of knowledge of good and evil, they were subject to spiritual and physical death. But before that, they were, they were innocent. They had no knowledge of good and evil. Genesis 3, 5, the devil said, For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. And you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Also, the person who asked this question, he said, to, you know, the, the children in the tribulation, if they take the mark, do they just just perish and, and go to hell like the children who, who perished in the flood? But the children which perished in the flood or in the righteous wars that, that God set up in the Old Testament, they would have also been safe if they died under the age of accountability. The babies that died in the flood... They didn't go to hell. And it just, when God allows these things to happen, it actually shows the mercy of God. He allowed the, the children and the little babies to be killed before they could reach that age because when they grew up, they would have, have, they would have most likely went the way of their heathen parents and eventually died an idol worshiper themselves. So he, in a sense, gave them a free pass. I mean, when a... Uh, 
Like if those, those children in the tribulation, if they get the mark and they die before they hit the age of accountability, you know, he gave them a free pass to heaven. They had no knowledge of good and evil. They, they couldn't make a conscien conscious decision about, about that, those type of things. In the tribulation, when a parent has a child take the mark or even takes him to the temple to worship the Antichrist, I don't believe the child will be automatically damned. It is the parent's fault. If the kid hasn't reached the age of having the knowledge that he's sinning against God, then he's still safe. For example, the children who didn't go in to possess the land back there <clears throat> in the Old Testament, if the, if the kid didn't go in to possess the land because their parents wouldn't go in, those children weren't penalized for it. In Deuteronomy 139, it says, Moreover, your little ones, which ye said should be a prey, and your children, which in that day had no knowledge between good and evil, they shall go in thither, and unto them will I give it, and they shall possess it. So they were not penalized because of their parents' decision. And if a child never uh, reaches the, the age of accountability in the tribulation and he takes the mark, you know, he's not going to go to hell. Or if he reached the age of accountability after the fact, you know, I, I personally don't believe he's going to be penalized for it. Because like it said there in Revelation 14.10, it's not just getting the mark. You know, a lot of people think, well, what if they hold you down and they, they put it on you? But it says... The people that's going to be going to hell is the ones who worship the beast in his image and whoso receiveth the mark of his name. Seems like it's going to be a conscious decision and not just somebody holding you down and putting it on you or your parents making you get it when you're, when you're just a child. There has to be a conscious decision being made almost like a spiritual transaction taking place, kind of like when you get saved. When you got saved, you knew the facts of the gospel, and you received it, and you believed in your heart to salvation. It seemed like this in Revelation 14, it's also a spiritual transaction. You worship the beast in his image, and you receive the mark of his name. It's not just somebody holding you down and giving it to you and doing it against your will. You're still going to have a free will in the matter. And the same way, you know, you get born again, you get eternal security from believing on Jesus Christ. These people who re willingly receive the mark, they get eternal damnation for believing on the Antichrist. It's a, it's a counterfeit type of thing. So my answer to that is, if a child takes the mark, is he automatically damned? I don't believe that he's automatically damned. I believe the answer is no. If he's not reached the age of accountability, he's safe. So that's my answer to that question.